Good morning. Uh, today I am presenting uh, diagnosis of amyloidosis using echocardiography uh, by a case based approach. This is the first videos uh, of echocardiography parasternal long axis view. You can appreciate by the first look that there is left ventricular hypertrophy that is very significant in addition to the speckling and uh, sparkling glistening myocardium. Again, parasternal long axis view, this time with color Doppler, showing no mitral regurgitation and no aortic regurgitation. But there is significantly dilated left atrium. This is apical for chamber view. Uh, okay, again, you can see dilated both atria, as we see, uh, see in most cases of restrictive cardiomyopathy with significant hypertrophy of the left ventricle, some hypertrophy of the right ventricle, and the hypertrophy of the upper part of the interatrial septum, there is no tricuspid regurge and there is no mitral regurge. Taking our measurements, the septum was 18 millimeter and the posterior wall was 19.6 millimeter encroaching on the left ventricular cavity that end diastolic volume left ventricular end diastolic volume was 3.6 centimeter um, this is looking uh, trying to calculate the right ventricular systolic pressure in the upper image you can see the cursor with continuous wave across the tricuspid valve and a tricuspid regurg maximum velocity of 2.2 with a gradient of 20 millimeter mercury and we will add 15 because the IVC is dilated incompressible just proximal to the hepatic vein that looks a bit engorged here uh, when we go to the parasternal short axis view uh, and uh, put continuous wave over the RVOT and calculate the RVOT acceleration time that was 66.4 we get a mean pulmonary artery pressure of 23 so the right ventricular systolic pressure and the mean pulmonary artery pressure are not very high but this can be explained by the impaired right ventricular function that we will see in the next images. This is a paper published in Jack in the year 2020 uh, to help use the echo by a validized, validated scores. Uh, in our patient, we will use the score for the patients with the hypertrophic cardiac phenotype, which they called the IW score so in this score they take into consideration the relative wall thickness the e over e prime average the tapsy the longitudinal strain the systolic apex to base ratio first let's calculate the relative wall thickness if it's more than 0.6 our patient takes three points we had an interventricular septum of 18 mm.1, a posterior wall thickness of 19.6, a left ventricular end diastolic diameter of 38.6. We put the height and the weight and we get the LV mass index and more importantly, we get the relative wall thickness 1.07 concentric hypertrophy this is an online calculator that you can access easily so definitely 1.0 is more than 0.6 so our patient qualifies to take these three points next step let's calculate the e over the e prime 
in the first step, you go for apical four chamber view, put the cursor at the tips of the mitral valve, do continue, uh, do pulsed wave, and you calculate the peak E velocity, which was 69.8. Then you do tissue Doppler and take the lateral annulus velocity, which was 5.0, and the medial annular velocity, which was 4.8. Then take average of both lateral and medial, which is 4.84. When we divide the uh, E over the averaged E prime, we get the number 14.4. So, 14.4 is more than 11, so our patient qualifies to take one point. Next, we move to the TAPSI. It's an easy, simple way. Our TAPSI was 14.1 millimeter, so it's less than 19 millimeter, so our patient takes two points. After this, we did a strain for our patient. As you know, in the amyloidosis has the typical characteristic feature of apical sparing and affect the, the basal and mid segments of the myocardium. So the strain in the basal parts and the mid parts was minus 12, minus 11. Whereas the apical segment showed minus 26, minus 22 and minus 24. So the apex is fine unlike the basal and mid part. The same was reproducible in the apical three chamber view and the same in the apical two chamber view. When we calculated and had the bull's eye, we get apical sparing, the red part, and what we call the cherry on top sparing the apex and affection mainly of the basal and mid segments and we got a global strain of minus 12.9 which is more than minus 13 so the longitudinal strain is impaired and our patient qualifies for one point the last step in the IWT score is to calculate the systolic apex to base ratio. If it's more than 2.9, you get three, three points. What is this? Systolic apex to base ratio is calculated by dividing the septal apical in the systole strain to the systolic septal basal strain. Uh, we took an average and it was 3.7. So it is more than 2.9, which again reproduced the characteristic feature of apical sparing in uh, cardiac amyloidosis, and the patient takes three points. So the patient actually checked for all the points to diagnose amyloidosis, and this is 10 points. When you use the IWT score and you get eight points or more, you can diagnose cardiac amyloidosis with a specificity of 98%. So you can rule in amyloidosis and proceed with your next investigations. I hope this was useful. Thank you and have a good day.